Hello everybody! So, in my last video called Why Does Disney Love Fake Out Deaths, I mentioned a theory by creator of the Pixar theory John Negroni that Tadashi from Big Hero 6 is still alive and will come back in the sequel of the series as the character Sunfire from the comics. And I was totally on board with this theory and was originally going to make this video explaining it. But then, I started looking into the character of Sunfire in the comics and well, I am now convinced that Sunfire will appear in the sequel of the series, but not as Tadashi but as none other than Professor Robert Callahan. Okay, I know that sounds crazy, but just, just trust me. I mean, Sunfire isn't even announced to be in anything worth it being the series or the sequel, which also isn't even announced yet. So, if it's not a way to bring back Tadashi, then why have Sunfire at all? And I do see your point, but I would say it's better to be pre-pre-pre-prepared. Comment below if you understood that reference. I do. I, I understood that reference. And if you really look into Sunfire in the comics, you'll notice some similarities to Professor Callahan. First, though, if you don't already know the theory about Tadashi being Sunfire, I'll quickly explain that for you. So the theory is that the invention that started the fire had something to do with nuclear energy. And when Tadashi runs in to save Professor Callahan, superhero origin story science kicks in and he gets superpowers instead of, you know, dying. And in the Big Hero 6 sequel, which Johnny Groney calls Big Hero 7, a villain will brainwash or mind control or do something that will cause Tadashi as Sunfire to fight Big Hero 6. And you'll see a very Revenge of the Sith-esque fight between Hero and Tadashi. But then he will be unbrainwashed and join the team, hence it being Big Hero 7. And this theory sounds awesome, right? And like I said before, I was completely on board with this theory and was convinced that this would be the plot of Big Hero 6 to Big Hero 7. But then I began doing some research on the character of Sunfire and my views began to change. So what I found was Sunfire, or Shiro Yoshida, is a mutant with solar radiation powers that he received from his mother getting radiation poisoning from the bombing of Hiroshima in World War II and dying in childbirth. So he's raised by his father Saburo, who is Japan's ambassador to the United Nations. But he's actually really raised by his uncle Tomo because his father's always off doing Japanese ambassador type things. And uncle Tomo is very anti-American. So Tomo tells Shiro to attack the Capitol building in Washington where he is opposed by the X-Men. He also meets up with his father, who was then shot and killed by Tomo. So then Shiro kills his uncle Tomo. He's also offered a spot in the X-Men, but refuses for him. Flash forward to Magneto releases an electromagnetic pulse around the world, causing Sunfire's body to overload and flare out over Tokyo. So Sunfire is imprisoned by the Japanese government before being broken out by Silver Samurai and Wolverine to fight giant mutant hunting robots. While fighting these robots, his powers flare out again and he is advised by Wolverine to go to Canada's Department H, which is a branch of the Canadian government that monitors all superhuman activity, so basically Canada's version of S.H.I.E.L.D. Eh? But the problem was that, unbeknownst to Wolverine, Department H had fallen into the hands of not-so-good people. Actually, quite evil people. They falsely tell Sunfire that he has radiation poisoning and give him a cure. This cure is actually zero fluid, which is a compound that basically makes him unable to control his powers. They also lie to him and tell him that the mixture of his powers and the fluid created cancer, and that he must serve them in order to get the treatment. He refuses, goes back home, and allegedly dies. Keyword, allegedly, because actually, he seeks refuge in an abandoned monastery. Now, this is where the story gets interesting, because this is where we see a familiar face. This is where we meet Hero. Hero, not Hamada. Although this is the same character as the hero that we know, in the comics, his name is Hero Takachiya. I definitely butchered that name, but we're just gonna forget about that. But nevertheless, this is Hero. So, back to the story. Hero idolized Sunfire and mourned his death. Remember, everybody thought that Sunfire had died at this point. But Hero still had hope that Sunfire was still alive and made a device that would notify him if Sunfire ever returned. One night, it does. So Hero and Baymax, his robotic, not healthcare companion, but bodyguard, go out to find Sunfire and find him in the abandoned monastery with half his body covered in zero fluid. 
Remember the flu that Department H, aka Canada's Shield, gave him? Hero is surprised and sad to see his idol in this terrible state. Sunfire tells them to leave and his powers flare out once again. Baymax sees this as an attack and goes into battle mode, fighting Sunfire while Hero tries to stop him and Sunfire tries to explain that it was an accident. Then the rest of Big Hero 6 arrive and stop the fight. Baymax and Hero go home and the rest of Big Hero 6 bring Sunfire to their headquarters. Now, in doing my research, when I read this part, it immediately sounded familiar. And I realized that it reminded me a lot of this scene. And although it seems like that Hero and Sunfire's relationship is more with Hero and Tadashi's, with Tadashi being Hero's role model and Hero mourning his death, it also applies to Professor Callahan and in some ways better. Remember, Hero also idolized Professor Callahan, and probably while they focus more on him mourning Tadashi's death, mourned his death, or death. And the device that Comics Hero uses to find Sunfire reminds me a lot of when Movie Hero is following his microbot to find Yokai, or Professor Callahan. And while the motives are obviously different and Movie Hero doesn't know that it's Professor Callahan yet, you can't deny the similarities. So, in Disney's Big Hero 6 movie universe, Professor Callahan is Sunfire, just without the powers yet. And you may be thinking, wasn't he the villain in Big Hero 6, why would they make him the villain again in the sequel or the series? Well first, he doesn't have to be the main villain, he could be a henchman or something. But also, why does he have to be a villain at all? He could have a redemption arc and maybe join the team at the end, still making it Big Hero 7. Or even better, a Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, Kylo Ren, Ben Solo redemption arc. Maybe he'll sacrifice himself, delivering the final blow to the villain, dying a redeemed good man, and avoiding the repercussions of his evil actions. And also, when you really think about it, isn't it better to leave Tadashi dead? I mean, if you watched my last video, I basically begged Disney to stop doing fake-out deaths, so anything that avoids another fake-out death is a good thing. But also, Tadashi is the origin story death. His death is the motivation for, well, the existence of Big Hero 6. It's like you wouldn't bring back Uncle Ben. You wouldn't bring back Batman's parents. And as cool as it would be to see a Winter Soldier-esque scene where Sunfire's mask comes off and it's real to be Tadashi, and Hero goes, Tadashi, and Tadashi goes, Who the heck is Tadashi? You can't bring back Tadashi. So, Professor Callahan is going to become Sunfire in the future Big Hero 6 sequel or the series or something. The groundwork is already there, and Professor Callahan seems to play the same role that Sunfire did to Hero in the comics. And it preserves Tadashi's origin story death. What do you think? Will Professor Callahan be Sunfire? Will Tadashi be Sunfire? Is Tadashi still alive? Comment your answers below. Anyway, that's a wrap.